Hello, and welcome back to another First Strokes. This is a series ongoing of video lessons I'm making for the newer or new-ish painter who just needs a few tips to help you get started, um, help solve some of the riddles of, of being a painter, and just really kind of get you on your way. And, and even some of these will even be helpful or refreshers to people that have been painting for a long time. You know, I sometimes like to go back and hit the basics again, just to remind myself of things I may have forgotten or just may not think about all the time. So whatever your level is as a painter, maybe you'll find something useful in this series. And uh, I just thank you for watching them, first of all. But today, uh, we're start, as we started a few weeks ago, we started with the very, very basics of just getting started. Like, what do you need? What do you need to get going and how do you use it? So today I'm gonna to talk about water buckets because everybody needs a water vessel. If you're painting with acrylic or watercolor paints or any kind of water-based media, you need water buckets. And, uh, and it's a mystery for a lot of people. What, what should I use? What size should I use? To a certain degree, you're gonna be limited by your space, of course. If you're working on a small table or something in your home, you know, space could be a, uh, a, a limitation for you. One thing you can do is if you're painting on a small table, is you could get a stool or something to set next or even a chair that you'd set next to your table that you could put your water bucket on to uh, give you a handy place that's right next to the hand you use to paint with where you can rinse your bucket and rinse your brushes and so forth just make sure if you're in your house that you're protecting your floors and you know other things that are going to get splashed on when you're when you're rinsing your brushes but but here's the thing um you can get a lot of different sizes um um, we can go all the way up here. This is four and a half gallons. Um, you can even go five gallons on buckets, but most of you are probably not going to have room for this. These are great. You'll, you probably will want these someday when you start doing really big, large paintings that are like six feet by six feet or bigger, then you might want a bigger, a bigger, uh, uh, water bucket. I tend to prefer more water buckets as opposed to larger water buckets. And the reason is uh, any, any bucket you stick a dirty paintbrush in, um, immediately that water is going to start to get dirty from the paint. So if you have a couple of buckets, two or three, you could go from dirty to a little bit cleaner to a little bit cleaner and, uh, and come back to your painting with a fairly clean brush. We'll talk more about brushes and how to use them and all that thing, all that sort of thing in subsequent weeks. But probably if you're starting out, this, this isn't probably the, the size you want to work with. So where do we go from there? Well, these are a pretty good size. These are, uh, this I think is two and uh, two gallons, two US gallons. And that's a good size. Um, again, you may have space limitations. Um, I'll show you what I mostly use. I mostly use this size or, or this size. This is a two and a half quart bucket, but I keep, I keep two or three of these handy when I'm painting so that I have multiple places to wash my brushes. So I don't have to stop and empty and refresh my water frequently. If I've got three buckets, I, like I said, I can get the initial amount of paint off the first bucket, then I can get a second one and a third one if I wanna really get my brush, my brush clean. So having a couple of these filled with, uh, with water, fresh water when you start is going to be helpful. These are good too. This is a, uh, what was, I think this, well, if this one is two gallons, this one would probably be uh, around a gallon, maybe, maybe slightly, slightly more or less than a gallon. So this is two and a half quarts, so it's a little bit more than half a gallon. This is probably about a gallon. These are good too. What I tend not to use is, and I know many of you are tempted to use when you're painting, is to go get these little plastic cups. This was from a, uh, from some soup from the store, but it's just a small cup, as is this, it's a fairly small cup. These, you just, you know, you use it once and your water's already filthy. It's just not all that useful unless you're painting really, really tiny. I mean, really tiny. <laughs> I use, I use this size even when I'm painting like uh, nine by 12 inches. So um, I don't know when you would use them this small. Uh, I recognize space limitations again, but if you can in any way, shape or form swing it, use something a little bit, a little bit bigger. You can also use a, an, old, an old bucket of, of paint. 
Um, when you empty a paint bucket, you can let it dry out. You can peel all the dry paint out of it and use that as your, as your water bucket for your, for your painting. And you know that's a gallon, right? So that's a choice. You can also um, use your empty, your empty paint bottles. This, this was a quart bottle of paint that I bought from one of my suppliers. And when they're empty, I, again, I let them kind of dry and get any residual paint peeled out of them. And then I've got a vessel that I can either mix paint and store it in if I need a specific color or, or I can use it again as another, another uh, water vessel. What I absolutely not recommend, and a lot of people tend to do this, is they'll get a, they'll get a glass jar or glass, some sort of glass container to use for their, for their water vessel when they're painting. I don't want to use things that are going to shatter if they fall. I just, that's just me. I don't want to do that. I'm kind of klutzy. I tend to knock things over in the studio all the time. I'm always cleaning up my own messes. Um, so I'm not going to use things that are breakable. I've gotten rid of almost anything in my studio that holds, whether it's holding brushes or water or supplies, but anything that's glass, I've pretty much gotten rid of. I keep everything plastic so it doesn't break if it falls. So now on the subject of water, because um, I know this is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty basic stuff, but you know, it, for what it's worth here. But like I said, I have a couple of these going when I'm painting. Here's the thing. At the end of my painting day, uh, I empty them. I rinse them out. I refill them with fresh water and I put them back on my table. So when I come back in my studio tomorrow or whenever I'm back in the studio, I have fresh water sitting there. I have my brushes out, my supplies, and I'm ready to go. That's just a really, really helpful tip. If I walk in, I got dirty water, and I think, oh, I got to clean up a mess before I can even start painting. That's when those little voices in your head start talking you out of that. So um, make it easy for yourself. And when you empty these in a, you know, I have a nice utility sink in my, in my studio, so I don't have to get my kitchen sink dirty or anything like that. But if you're, whatever sink you're using to rinse, rinse your water bucket in, um, you dump the water out, rinse it, let the water run for a little bit in the sink. Just, I don't know, half a minute if you can, maybe even a little bit longer, depending on how much water or how much sludge you had in the bottom of your water bucket. And, you know, you're guided by your own, your own uh, level of, of concern for the environment. I try to use paints that are pretty environmentally friendly, et cetera, but, um, you know, guided by your own conscience. But if, you're, if you are pouring it down, you're down a drain, then uh, let the water run a bit so it dilutes that paint because uh, I've heard of some of the art centers where they teach a lot of art classes and so forth. They tend to have their pipes get clogged up and, and you know, solid with, with paint drying in them. And, uh, and that's going to create very expensive plumbing problems for you if that happens. And if you paint a lot, it can. It can happen. So I just make sure if I'm rinsing anything down the sink, I'm letting that water run. So I'm shoving that material all the way to the sewer at the street. So I, I think that's a helpful tip for you. Always have a always have a spray bottle. You know, I have a couple of these. I always have some spray because your your acrylic paint. If you're using a a, dr a dry palette for your paint, it's gonna get it's gonna dry out, and you can you know mist it a little bit periodically to keep your paint damp. You can mist your your surface, your canvas, or your paper, whatever surface you're working on, if you want to keep it workable, keep it, keep it wet. So. There's just a lot of uses for having some spray bottles in your uh, in your studio. As you can see, this one is well <laughs> well traveled, well worn, and I have probably at least a dozen spray bottles in the studio. So, and these are not very expensive, four dollars maybe. I don't know, but um, and you can get the little ones, the little spritzers or whatever, whatever works for you. But you know, have a couple of spray bottles if if you can. So, yeah. So that's a fair amount of information, and I hope it's useful to you. Of course, I'm always wel always welcome your questions and feedback, but uh, stay tuned. I'm going to keep bringing these to your inbox every week, and I really appreciate this community for for staying staying in touch and uh, and allowing me to 
to send these into your home each week. So I hope you're enjoying them. I appreciate you and happy painting until, until next week and take care. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.